friend on Friday. His name was Ron Glass. You may know him as Lieutenant Harris on Barney Miller. We weren't just friends. We were also neighbors for over 10 years up in the Hollywood Hills. We played racquetball. He was a sore loser. We went to a lot of events and parties together. One time, Ron asked me out for lunch. And right before the lunch ended, he told me that the Al Wooten Center, a charity that I've been helping Ron with for some time, was having a dinner event coming up. And they asked him to invite me. So I said, oh, uh, well, you know, I don't go out a lot, Ron. And he goes, yeah, I know. But is it, I said, what is it? Is it during the daytime? He said, no, Jay, what he does. I said, oh, when is it? He said, Friday. And he saw my face drop. And I said, well, you know, Ron, Fridays are mine. He gets all upset and he goes, you know, Jay, you're like a hermit. You never do anything. You stop going to my parties. You stop going out. I said, well, Ron, I just like doing nothing now. He said, oh, I see. So let me ask you this, Jay. If someone were to honor you, would you even show up? I said, of course I would show up, Ron, but that's different. Nobody is honoring me here. He goes, fine. And he pays the check and he leaves. I go back to the office and Luana hands me a fax and says, Jay, this is weird. Something from the Al Wooten Center. They were indeed going to honor me. For over 10 years, I was helping the Al Wooten Center because Ron asked me to. I had no, I had no idea what I was doing. I was just giving them stuff like I give anybody stuff. The Al Wooten Center takes children off the streets during the daytime, finds out why they're in the streets, and if they don't want to go to school, they'll give them an education there. This little girl comes up, well not so little I guess, this young lady goes to the microphone and she is the first person in the Al Wooten Center to graduate and go to college to go to Berkeley. And when she gave her speech, she looked directly at me and she thanked me for all the things I've done. I was touched. I had no idea. Anyway, that's one of many stories I have of Ron. I will miss you and I love you. Rest in peace, my friend. <laughs> Two words, babe. Eternal damnation. We in business? <laughs> Did I say soul? Sorry. Slip of the tongue. Sorry to waste your time. You're a busy man? I'm a busy man. We're both busy men. Let's go somewhere and find a place to be busy. It was just an idle comment, for God's sakes. You don't go after every poor jerk that makes a careless remark, do you? Okay, maybe you do. Here's the back story, Sam. You don't mind if I call you Sam, do you? I mean, I think we're really connecting here in a positive way. And I'd like to cut through all that victim, demon, negative imaging. You know what I mean? Okay. Here's the deal. All that mathematical lingo you were spouting, it's beautiful, man. It's like poetry. It brought tears to my eyes. Just happen to have the right phonetic structure to be a good old-fashioned demonic invocation. 
Especially with that neat little curse woven into it. We talking high concept or what? Yeah, well, you can just go back to whatever Stygian depths you came from, fella. Because I have no intention, thank you, of selling my soul for the solution of any equation. Stygian depths. I like that. You mention Dante to most people these days, and they ask you how you liked gremlins. No! 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 Another of our continuing tips on what to do if the devil shows up on your doorstep. That guy wasn't any help at all. A public service announcement from the Twilight Zone.